Oh, hello. My name's Zeke, and I run a comedy gaming website. That's me there in the sexy RAF coat. I'm not a member of the Royal Air Force, but I do bloody love a good flight simulator. The only problem is, I don't actually know what any of these buttons are for, or what they do. But it doesn't matter! Despite my high rate of failure, I figured it would be fun anyway to take some gamers and other cool folk out for a spin. At the end of the interview, we'll try and land the plane together, at their airport of choice. Or any available flat surface, I guess. So, without further ado, I'm gonna plug in my crappy joystick and take to the skies. It's time for another episode of Noobs on a Plane. I am a British gamer who sucks at playing flight sims, interviewing people while we try to land the plane. Hello! Wow, it has been a while since I've been in this seat. Um, basically, you guys may remember that uh, in the last episode we flew the delightful horror novelist Joseph de Lacey through a tropical storm. And things went surprisingly well. And obviously the excitement of the show is not knowing if it's going to end in a fiery death. So um, I figured I was getting too good at landing a plane and just decided to take a little break from it. Uh, it was certainly nothing to do with copyright restrictions. That never happened. Anyway, we are back. And to make it up for everyone who was waiting for a new episode of Noobs on a Plane, we have got a corker for you. Uh, we're back in the gaming industry and this time, my co-pilot is a man who is out on the front lines. He is pushing game creation to stratospheric heights, and even challenging our preconceived notions of what gaming is. It's my pleasure to introduce this giant of the industry, a man whose originality has got the whole community talking, Peter Molyneux. Would be proud! It's Will Briley of Soda Drinker Pro. Will, how the devil are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Excellent, I'm not too bad. I've got a crick in my shoulder. Um, I've been sat at the uh, desk all week and it's really kind of bugging me. I can't see... Yeah, otherwise, all good. Ooh. So, um, as always, the guest gets to choose a destination that we're going to crash into. Um, where have you picked, Will? Oh, uh, today we're going to be flying to Gibraltar. Gibraltar, indeed. Famously, one of the hardest airports to land at. And um, just to make it a little bit more challenging, we're back in the Boeing 747, which we haven't been in since episode two. And I crashed that, even though we had an actual pilot on board for that episode. So <laughs> things are looking promising. What I suggest, Will, we get this up in the air, um, and then we chat a little bit about the work you've been doing on Soda Drinker Pro. That has uh, really been taking the gaming community by storm, and I can't wait to pick your brains about that. That sounds great. Um, oh god, oh god, I cannot remember what I'm doing. I, uh, I literally haven't touched this since we last shot the show, which was, I think, back in June, if memory serves. Uh -oh. So, oh, and we're veering off course. Let's, uh, let's pull this back. Oh, and we're up. We're up. Nice. That wasn't bad, was it? That yeah. wasn't bad at all. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'll point out that we're in Africa at the moment. Um, what I figured we'd do is just... Um, skirt along the north coast of Africa, then mm. hang a right once we get to the Gibraltar Strait, and then uh, bring this puppy down, I think. Sounds good to me. Cool. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to introduce it. Tell me about Soda Drinker Pro. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I guess similar to a flight simulator, we're trying to be the most realistic uh, soda drinking simulator on the market. So, it, it's, you know, a lot of people ask, is it a game, or, you know, we, we it's pretty much a, the... Uh, it's like we're trying to think of it as like the Microsoft Flight Simulator of uh, of soda drinking, you know. Absolutely, soda. I have it's seen in the press that it's heralded as uh, one of the top three most realistic soda drinking simulators going. Yeah, that's what we're going for. You know, we we had to for the full release, we we redid the whole uh, fluid engine, and uh, you know, really had to to just make sure like the the liquid dynamics and the cup were were proper, and and you know, everything was was just right on it. It's really nice to see it out and, and people playing the full version and really, you know, want it to be an experience that after you play the whole thing, it'll be a worthwhile experience, you know? 
Well, I've so. got to say, well, the, the amount of work that you put into it is clearly paying dividends. It shows through um, with the game. And I, I know that you, you kind of ported it to Unity. You used the Unity engine, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So it was originally, like, like it was originally made about six years ago. Like, for the, the first version of it was in, um, <clears throat> it was literally, like, at four in the morning or something. I woke up and I was really thirsty. And, and I was like, oh, I, I need a soda. And, and I didn't have one. And I was like, well, you know, we'll just make a soda. And I thought it would be, you know, I thought I was thinking, like, FPS, first person soda. And I just woke up that day and I just started working on it. And I made it in, like, Blender and Python. And then my, my girlfriend, who is now my wife... Um, Did she, she marry uh, you on the back of this? <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah, well, I, I, was, I was lucky because, like, she... Uh, um, I remember showing it to her. And, and like, I was an absolutely crazy person uh, that day because all I did was just drink soda and make this game. And I was, like... And I, I was just like, this is so neat. <laughs> 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 and then... And I just remember the look on her face. She's like, "Oh, that's neat. It's weird, but it's cool, you know." Whatever. And, and you know, it worked out. But it was like <laughs> she saw the, she saw the game, and then she proposed to you. Is what <laughs> happened. Um, but I, I can imagine, you know, back in the very early days, you know, day one, it, it, it was probably quite rudimentary and not anywhere as near the, the polished version as we've come to know and love it today. Yeah, there, there was definitely you couldn't do certain things like. You couldn't look around with the mouse, uh, and uh, uh, there, there wasn't as you know the the light shaders weren't as good, and and uh, you know the there, there just wasn't a lot of the same stuff. And of course, you didn't have the Oculus back then too. Sure. Which was, uh, you know that that was like a dream come true for this. So yeah, so. no, definitely. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm I'm going up. That's a, that's a plus. Uh, cool. we're, we're about coming up to 20,000 feet now, which is, is nice. I, I like that. Yeah, but um, I don't know which direction we're going in, so I'm just going to pause would... this, have a little look at the map, and uh, okay. see if we can't figure it out. Okay, yep, as is uh, customary for this show, we're going in literally the opposite direction to where <laughs> we want to be going. Let's, let's see if we can just turn this around first of all. Oh, things are bleeping at me. Alright, shut up. Oh, we're approaching stall speeds. Not uh -oh. good. Not good. Uh, right, let's just see if I can get this working. So I need to fly to LXGB, apparently. This speed breaks in, in the way. I need to move this. I'm sure that won't do anything detrimental. <laughs> Is that like a autopilot thing? Um, I don't know how to get the autopilot working, but what it's done, I don't know if you can see that little dial there. It's mm -hmm. just set a, a purple kind of way marker for me, so... I can just stick on that and that should be okay. Oh god, what the... What is happening? Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm pointing towards space! Let's bring this back a little bit. And turn... Maybe I'll put that back on. There we go. Oh, we've got a beautiful sunset just about to rise above the uh, savannah of Africa. It's my little gift to you, Will. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. No problem. Um, so yeah, back to Soda Drinker. So, describe Soda Drinker pro for people who might not be familiar with it. Yeah, so what you do is you walk around, you start out at, at one location, the first one is the beach, and then you you walk around, you've got a, it's, it's basically just like in real life, like you have a soda meter, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when you click the left mouse, it puts the soda to your mouth, and then the right mouse sits on the soda when you when you have the soda at your mouth. So you can, you can walk around at various locations, uh, you know, everywhere from, you know, you, the there's the beach or the mall or or uh, you know inside a stomach or my favorite uh, level was uh, drinking a soda just before a big convention um, oh yeah seven, that was a cracker <laughs> I love that level thank you That's a, that one I, I made specially for uh, um, for PAX this year it was because uh, I, I was on a, a panel at, at the PAX show and I I said to the the fellow who who asked me to to be on it, I'm like, where where would you like to have a soda? And he's like, you should do one for uh, you know the convention hall. So that's that's kind of like what they look like that that uh, the the rooms at PAX like look like before you have uh, uh, people in. Oh so. wow! So it's not just a soda simulator; it's a PAX convention simulator exactly, at the same yeah. time. That's exactly. the thing I love about this game. It's so multi leveled, <laughs> and it also gets you thinking about. Um, yourself and your place in the world. For instance, I was playing earlier on today the uh, the level drinking a soda inside a giant mouth. 
Um, and I I booked into the dentist. I'm going to oh, see yeah. the dentist yeah. next Friday because it started making me think about cavities and things. So yeah, yeah, it's it's you know I, there's that old story about someone I think a doctor who put a tooth in and left it in in soda for like a long time mm. and it, it ended up just making the tooth completely awesome. <laughs> but there's lessons to be learned here for definite. <laughs> exactly. It's, I think it was Coco Chanel that said uh, the best things in life are free. The second best things in life are very expensive. Yep. I don't think she was thinking about soda. She forgot no. about soda there. That, that's true. There's all sorts of different different types of sodas, you know. It's uh, and you can you can drink. You know, I, I usually recommend people drink at least five hundred of them a day, uh, just to stay. Oh, know, at safe. least, yeah, yeah. Can you confirm? I know it's a frequently asked question. Um, what the soda is in the game? You know, it's it's all in. in we, we developed this really uh, special technology for it, where it's like it's actually inside the the player's mind. So we're we're actually able to take whatever they're thinking of as a soda, and and it actually becomes it in the game. So it's it's pretty neat. That that one took a long time to really get like get right, but but you know we finally got it. I think that is pretty neat. Is that why you had to port it to Unity just to take advantage of the advanced tech that that platform brings? Exactly. Yeah. Well, That's obviously, Unity is used by the Kerbal Space Program guys. You know, oh, yeah, they do yeah. rocket science with it, so it's not surprising you were able to bring that kind of um, you know effect to the forefront of the game. I've just been asked um, whether people can expect a Soda Drinker Pro HD, but I was I was looking at the question which came in over Twitter. Um, I was thinking, can you even improve on it without the gamer having an IMAX theater screen to properly view it on? Like the the closest thing to that would be maybe when the HD Rift comes out, we we'd probably have to have some sort of warnings on there so people don't you know like think that it's too real and then they starve or something. But it's that was why the original version, we we actually left the cursor on the screen. Normally a first person game, you don't see the mouse cursor, but we actually had to leave it on there because people were getting stuck in the simulation. So uh, that way it kind of lets mm. people know that they're still in a game. They won't just sit there for the rest of their life. Obviously you have a responsibility as a game creator to, to look yeah. after your patrons and, and players. So, no, good move. Good move. Yeah. How was the, the Steam green lighting process treated you? Um, I know it's been met with a lot of controversy, um, yeah. especially over the past six months. Like the first version of the game came out, actually it's been about almost a full year since the entire game, like the first game came out. It was mm. actually the first of uh, 2013 was was when like the first kind of big pieces came out about it, and uh, um, there was uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, one sec, we've got an incoming plane here. Whoa! Yeah. I'm gonna chase him down. Yeah. Nice. What the hell is that? It's like a Spitfire or something. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Right when it first came out, a bunch of people were saying, you got to put this on Greenlight. And I was like, okay. And uh, I, I want to see if like people really wanted it on there or, or whatever. So mm. I put a little PayPal button on there. And I said, if 200 people send me 50 cents in in you know the next couple of days, I'll put it on Greenlight. And that way, you know, it covers the cost of, of putting it on there. And, and it would it's more like to show if people are actually interested in it. Just test the so, water kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, test yeah. Test the soda. Exactly, and 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 it was awesome. Like within a day, you know, it it was it was more than two hundred people sent it, and and so it got on Greenlight, and then it ended up getting like flagged as spam. So it never like for most of the <clears throat> time it was initially on there. Like the only way you could find out about it was if you went to like uh, the website or Twitter or something and got the direct link to the page. Right. But it was like so it was really hard for people to vote. Like I I actually met some folks from Valve uh, like a couple months ago and, and they said they were going to try and you know get it fixed or something because it wasn't supposed to be marked as spam but then uh, what they did instead was uh, just relaunched it as the full version uh, you know uh, probably like a week ago and, and it's been going great it's really cool it's like since um, I actually kept track of the stats when we initially launched the stats weren't that great but now it's actually pretty good. So, I mean, who knows if it would get greenlit, but like, I'm just happy people are playing it and uh, 
But it would be really cool if it was on Steam. Oh, uh, and I will point out, obviously, if you haven't already voted for Soda Drinker Pro, everything you need to know about this game is going to be in the descri description box below, so do click through and, and do your thing, um, and support this great game. Thank you. That's cool. So, that's that. But yeah, I like Steam, and can I also say, Will, thank you so much for not neglecting Mac users. Oh, uh, yeah. That's... That's all, all Unity. They're, they're so, that's what I love about it, is the cross-platform side of it. They make it so easy to just, you know, port for different platforms. Like, that way if we want to do, like, Xbox One or PlayStation 4 or... Oh, you excellent. Know, it would be great. So, I, would, it, I would love to see that come to the Xbox One and have that soda-drinking experience in my living room. That would be yeah, amazing. That would be sweet. That's, that's definitely, yeah. Uh, I actually talked to uh, Nintendo maybe not, not too long ago about about doing a Wii U thing where you know we do a dual screen uh, oh. uh, soda drinking which would be pretty sweet so it'd be pretty sweet for you and it'd be pretty sweet for them I think that would put them back in the frame of the console wars I think I think it you know it could definitely help many people are a little bit daunted when they hear that uh, in the game you'll be drinking soda in space but I think it's really important to point out that the learning curve is really gentle um, you start off yeah. at the beach you know um, and then the controls, although you do have separate buttons for raising your, your, your soda cart and, and drinking from it, um, it, it doesn't get much more complex than that. So pretty much anyone can pick up and play it. Exactly. Like, I uh, actually saw someone in a, in a review the other day. They said, uh, it's not like a physically challenging game. It's existentially challenging, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's, that's a good way to describe it. So. Mm, definitely. Um, so tell me about yourself. Well, I guess a little bit about myself. I, I live in uh, in Cambridge, right? You know, uh, next to Boston. Yep. And uh, um, let's see, I have two cats. Uh, I make some other games too. Actually, the um, wait, 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 wait. Let's go back to the cats. You've got a cat called Decaf, right? Yeah, yeah. He's super nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the name Decaf come from? He's just so calm and and <laughs> and chill. You know, like his original owner was like an old woman who passed away and, and, and she always yeah it, she, she, Ali always says like like he probably just ate a little bit of her like because <laughs> I think they like found um you know uh, it's they, an old woman <laughs> yeah they found a old woman like you know in her apartment passed away and and uh you know, so he probably just like took a little nibble of her ear or something. You know, oh, but, but that's he's, adorable. He's, he's, uh, we're just coming into some kind of thundercloud or something. Uh, I'm veering off course slightly, but what I'm going to try and do, I've just seen what may be the Nile, perhaps, and I figured oh. it'd be cool if we dropped below the clouds and had a little yeah. look at that. Although I'm really jamming hard down on the, the joystick, and it's not going down. Oh, it's probably because we're going way too fast. Uh, oh God, the landing gear is still down. Oh! <laughs> Jesus, that doesn't help. Let's pop that back up. <laughs> it's going to reduce the thrust a little bit. We'll go under this cloud and see what's going on. So, yes, video games. You're, you're not just, although you're slightly typecast now with the successes of Soda Drink Pro, you yeah. have made quite a number of games. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, actually, last time I was in London was for a, a, vid a video game I made. I made, like, a regular arcade game. On an actual and, arcade machine. Yeah, yeah. That is it, so neat. It was cool. It was like, and, and I was there for like an arcade trade show. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't like a big, you know, commercial success or anything, but it was just like, it's kind of similar to, to the soda trick. I was like, just w woke up one day and I was like, oh man, I want to make a game really bad. <laughs> and, I must and find I, an arcade machine. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was crazy. I, I ended up like going to Home Depot and like buying some plywood and just like looked at the plans for for other arcade cabinets and and uh, kind of made my own variation of them and then I, I went in the backyard and cut up all this wood and and made the cabinet and made the game and wired everything up and then put it in the clubs and it, it did okay wow okay see, that's the difference between a thinker and a doer my friends <laughs> <laughs> but the only problem is is they take up tons of space and that many places want to have them. Uh, it's a shame, they are really dying, a dying breed, and, and to yeah. folk like us who are, you know, early 30s, they, they're a big part of our childhood. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a place not too far from where I live, it's like maybe an um, hour and a half north of, of me, okay. called Fun, Fun Spot, and uh, 
Have you ever seen the movie um, uh, The King of Kong? Yes, I have. Yeah, excellent yeah. movie. So that that's where most of it takes place is is that fun spot. Oh, so, right, yeah. Yeah, and so I go there usually a few times a year and and I, it just like they have the most amazing selection of like classic arcade games and you just play like every single one of them. They they've got like a uh, computer space machine that actually works and it's it's really incredible. It's a uh, um so I actually went there for my bachelor party. It was like the most wholesome, nice thing. <laughs> with, like all like my best friends, and they were like, uh, we snorting coke off the Pac-Man machine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they had a deluxe base harrier machine. Oh, that, that like, was a great kind of... game. Love that oh game. yeah, and you sit in it, and and it moves while you're like on the, you know, using the joystick. I remember and... that machine. They had yeah. one near me. That was oh, amazing. It was so good. I I played it. I must have spent like forty bucks on it or whatever, but I beat the game. Oh my god! <laughs> you know? I totally forgot about that. That's really rekindled my childhood. Oh man, it's so good. The music in that, awesome. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, excellent. I'm just going to have another little look at the map because. Oh yeah. I wonder if we're still going the right way. There's too much land for my liking, given that <laughs> we were supposed to be right next to the ocean. Although that might be it over there, possibly. Cool. Don't know. Um, I'm also worried about the speed because um, I think in doing the landing gear and messing with the speed brake and I've been hammering on the throttle left, right and centre, I'm a bit worried we're about to drop out of the air. So that, that, that's something we can worry about. <laughs> I think that's that's the thing I enjoy the most is like just making, you know, whether it's making a game or music or, or any of that stuff, it's, it's really, really fun. So I got a bunch more games in the works, so... Hopefully Excellent. that'll allow me to keep on making them, and either way, I'm going to make them anyway. Because sure, <laughs> yeah. Can you provide fun. any uh, any teasers for the for the people watching? Yeah, you know, uh, well, there's a huge, huge update uh, to the Vivian Clark stuff coming out soon. So, for people who don't don't know about that, if there's a um, in the second level in Soda Drinker, if you stand next to a rock for like there's this rock next to a house, if you stand next to it for like about a minute. It unlocks a full game inside of the game, and it's and, incredible. It's really oh, just you. something else. Oh, uh, there's some other things hidden in, inside Soda Drinker that that'll probably come out pretty soon too, and and then we have a mobile version of it, which is fun. Oh, excellent! Um, yeah, excellent. <laughs> so you can literally experience drinking a soda anywhere. Oh yeah, with exactly. This. Yep. Wow. Uh, and then there's uh, I I just started a, a new mobile game to uh, it's it's kind of like. A rhythm. I wouldn't say it's a rhythm game. It's it's like. Have you ever played Clax? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's sort of. There's aspects to Clax because there's things coming at you in the distance, but it's a totally different sort of thing, where you're basically holding the switchblade, or like a Swiss Army knife type thing, and these things fly at you. So say like a mouth flies at you, and then you press the toothbrush button, and then a toothbrush pops out of the switchblade, and you gotta like brush the teeth, and they're all coming at you. From different angles, so you got to decide like which ones to do first. Of course, that, that, that all makes sense. It's quite soft, yeah. <laughs> self-explanatory. So, as most people know, every episode on Noobs on a Plane, we like to play a little game called Would You Rather. Will, would you like to play Would You Rather? Absolutely. Excellent. First off, would you rather live in a world without soda or live in a world without puppies? You know... As much as I love soda, I gotta let the puppies, puppies gotta gotta be there. Cause, cause you could always you play Soda Drinker Pro instead of drinking soda. Oh, that is true. No one's made a decent puppy simulator yet. I know yeah, Ten Dogs yeah. is out, but you know it, it doesn't really come close. So exactly. Ah, good answer. Would you rather every time you see the color red, you lose the ability to walk for ten seconds, or Every time there is a successful Mars mission, you your bank account resets itself to zero. Ooh, I, I'd say uh, the Mars mission. I'd, I'd rather have that. And I think it would be, you know, uh, a fun challenge to have the, the bank account reset to zero every time. So, uh, and maybe I could set up a deal where I, I, I could do like some sort of promotion for Mars missions and stuff. That, so, that yeah. would work, but then you would get the endorsement money from NASA. They would yeah. complete the mission. Then you would lose the endorsement disappear. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I, 
<laughs> I'd like that. Oh, I can see some blinky lights down here. What's going on? Um, <laughs> obviously, Gibraltar's quite famous for having it. There's like a main road that goes across it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. It was on one of those shows recently, you know, the most dangerous airport landings ever! Yeah. And it was in one of the top ten, I'm sure. Yeah. I think I've seen that show before. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's amazing. It's like a list of things. It's like right after, like, world's most juiciest cheeseburgers, you know? <laughs> and it's so dramatic, but it's like, no, these guys are trained pilots. Do you know how many yeah. of them crash at Gibraltar every year? Zero. Yeah. Because they're yeah. trained pilots. <laughs> yeah. If it was so crazy that there was only a 50-50 chance of pulling it off, they wouldn't have it. <laughs> okay, that's the bay that we can see in the distance. So it's going to be on the right-hand side of that, um, mm. on that little point. I don't know which angle I'm supposed to be flying in from, but we'll see how it goes. I'm still very high, so to speak, so I need to descend. Oh, I can't even see how high I am. Let's get rid of that. There we go. 23,000 feet. Wow. That's a bit too much. I'm going to cut the throttle and point at the ocean. There it is there. See that blinky light? Hmm. Um, don't quite know what to do about that. I'm going to swing out to the left, if you approve. Um, yeah. We'll go over the town there. Ooh. We'll fly out a bit and then we'll come back around, we'll do a 180 and see if we can't land this thing. Anyway, here we go. I've kind of overshot a little bit. Um, I, I need to kind of correct myself. The throttle is off. I've put some flaps on, which will raise us up a little bit, so we're not going at a crazy angle. But God, it is a short runway. Oh, wow. That is I a have... very short <laughs> runway. Yeah. Okay, we're going the wrong direction and we're at the wrong height and probably the wrong speed as well, so <laughs> zero out of three for landing so far. <laughs> Alright, here we go, here we go. <sighs> this is tense. Just like to say, in case we die, um, check out all of uh, Will's links in the description box below. Everything you need to know is there. Um, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of this. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll catch yeah. you next time. Any last goodbyes you want to make, Will? Because I don't oh, think man. this is going to go well. <laughs> yeah, there's no stone all of me. Oh, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, oh, landing gear, okay, landing yeah. gear. Nice. Oh. Okay, this isn't bad, this isn't bad, this isn't bad. We just need to stop incredibly quickly. Yeah. Wow, look at the, the skid marks on the... the <laughs> We're about to add to them. Or maybe not. Reverse thrusters. Oh, ocean! Oh. oh no! Oh no! Oh, we're bouncing off the ocean. Oh, that wasn't bad though. We didn't crash and burn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's screaming at me that I'm about to crash. I know, I know, I've got eyes. Oh no, we're back down. It's all over. It's all over. Uh, I'll put the brake. <laughs> I was just about to say I'm going to put the brakes on. What does it matter? <laughs> How will that help? Well, we're not too far away from land that people can't uh, come and get us. Yeah. Is there any jack button? There is for you, my son. I'll catch you later. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. Well, I really, really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. I'm glad wow. to hear that everything's going going so well. Oh, thank you. This is really fun. So. Yeah, it's, it's been an enjoyable flight. Um, yeah. So once again, I'll say it in a less panicked voice, um, do check out Soda Drinker Pro and all, all the other projects Will's got going on with the links below and vote for it on Greenlight. It's so important that you do that. Um, and maybe share this video as well, just to spread the, the lovely message of soda Absolutely. drinking goodness. <laughs> so thanks, Will. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. It's a, thank you so much. It's really fun. Cool. All right. Take it easy, everyone. Catch you later.